All right, all right. So I am out here today. It's actually pretty nice. It's like in the high 60s, maybe 70 degrees. At night it gets pretty cool, but it's really nice out here today. And I'm out here at a client's place. You can see the little barn back here. And he called a couple of problems, actually three problems. Well, let me show you what I got. So you can see this place is pretty nice. That canopy over there, this place uh, holds a lot of weddings. And they hold out here and it's actually a pretty nice little setup. A little chicken coop. I think I saw some peacocks back there too. Anyway, so we're out here looking at his stuff. He has this mower, you can see already dug into it. And even though it looks like it's been through it, uh, it would run when I sprayed uh, uh, the choke cleaner into the carburetor. And it would turn over, just not run. And sure enough, I just took, you know, cleaning everything off as I go. But all this stuff was so gummed up and I just took the carburetor off and uh, cleaned that out. So pretty standard stuff. I'm sure once I just finish cleaning this, put it back together and it's going to crank no problem. Other thing, so we look back here in the barn. So he's got this Craftsman Zero Turn. And first off, I noticed, you know, the little key deal, the little punch. It's really tough connection in there. So I'm going to clean all that up. But when it does connect, all you hear is uh, a spinning. But I'll get to that in a second. I'll, I'll have to sit down. and um, Hopefully, it's just, uh, I mean, I could hear it spinning. And it sounded like it was just the starter spinning by itself. That little engagement gear that pops up, I don't think it's popping up and engaging with the flywheel. Um, it sounds like it's just spinning, but we'll get to that in a second. The other one, I'm not going to be able to fix this. I didn't know he had this problem, but you see this is a Kubota the B7510. Nice little tractor, um, but you can see here where hydraulics leaking through here and I can't tell if it's a seal under here or it could be actually coming from up here uh, don't know don't know yet I'm gonna have to crank it up and see if we can see it coming out but it looks like it's just a seal problem um, either from here or down here so that one I'm going to have to tackle on another day. He didn't tell me about this one when I came out here. And I don't have the, I don't think I have the right tools. So I don't have any seals. I, you know, I don't want to tear into it without having the right stuff. So let's get back to this stuff. I am just going to put this back together. It's pretty cut and dry, you know. Look like it just need a, a good carb cleaning on it. And when I did clean out the bowl and all that good stuff, there was a lot of green stuff in there. Um, I don't know if that was from some kind of uh, uh, fuel additive, you know, that was in there. Or just did some junk get in there, you know. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to make sure this is working here. I'll blow into, I'll blow in right there, I can blow through it, and when I seal it, it'll, it should shut off. No problem. So, I am going to finish this off. Make sure this is good and clean. This one's pretty cut and dry. I mean, it's just definitely a carburetor problem. But I'm going to put this back together, crank it up for you, and uh, but I think that was the the whole problem here. There's the 
if you want to go. Let me drain some of this out. I want to make sure there's nothing in the tank. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. I do not know when the last time I used this, but uh, but given that this is what is today, December the fourth or seventh or something, but it's in Dece December. So it's the off season, but I got a ton of calls this week. Yep, there we go. Now it's leaking. Look at that big time leak. It's, uh, let's see if the float bowl is stuck. Yep, there it goes. That's usually when the float bowl sticks when you first put it on there. So that sealed that. All right, before I put the air cleaner back on, but the air cleaner looks good. See, that's uh, that's pretty clean. It's just all this stuff in here. Let's crank it up first. We'll put the cleaner back on. Might take a few times. pretty low so let's uh, see this little tab can you see that the thing is bent way back so let's bend this back out that was a little tab if you can't see that that little tab where the the governor spring hooks right there with the spring going to the carburetor that's you know with the governor and all that good stuff on there so that tab when you move it move it back it lowers the rpm tighten it up and it'll raise the rpms but it looks like it was it was bent way back RPMs are back up, but I'm going to lower it a little bit. But it still sounds pretty erratic, doesn't it? Um, and I want to take a look at the spark plug. That'll always give us a sign of what was going on, you know.
You know, it, not bad, but look at the gap on that sucker. I mean, it is it is flat. Let's re-gap that and see if that helps any. You can see how flat that thing is. 030. Yeah, that's not even close. Let's see what it was at. That was 016 I could get in. <laughs> so, let's recap this sucker. Right, let's see if that'll help. helped. I still think it sounds pretty junky, but uh, but it might be the bad gas. Let me check and see what kind of oil he's got in here. There's enough oil, but it's very thick and brown. Ask him and see if he wants an oil change now or beginning of spring or whatever next year. But that should get him going. His front wheels looks like the bushings are just shot. This wheel, both of them on the front. Mower's been through it, but it's still running. All right, so here's the Craftsman Zero Turn. I'm going to try to get it to, to turn over. But if you listen real close, you're just going to hear it spin. Hear that? what it sounds like. Alright, I wheeled it out. We have some out in the outside of the barn where we have a little better lighting here. So take all this off. That's got oil too, but that also needs an oil change, don't it? So I'm just going to unbolt this cover and uh, I'll fast forward through this to save you the boredom. Alright, so I got the cover off. See it was just a few bolts. Just pulled it off. So there's the starter. Let me see if I can a good view. Let me see if I can try to turn it over. That's what's happening. So I just pop that cap off. Looks like looks like it's trying. Let me get this cover out of the way. I didn't disconnect the uh, the fuel pump. All right, let's see if it'll pop up. Try 
try it again. I didn't really do anything except take this little cap off. I'd hate to say I fixed it. So the cap, it snaps around here at the bottom. But the way it felt, so now the whole thing's moving. Before it felt like this was jammed around that nut, you know, and it was keeping the whole thing from, from popping up. But let's see what happens here with the cap back on. That was it. That was kind of kind of easy there. Let me pop this cap back off. Yeah, it just felt like that was jammed up on the nut. I think this nut was coming off. See how loose that is? I need to tighten that back down. So I think the nut was coming off, jamming against the top of the cap, keeping this whole thing from popping up. You know what I mean? It was just jammed on it. Let's put it back together and give it a test run. Alright, so I got it back together. One thing I did want to do is this thing's really hard to seems like the contacts are really tough on it. But he did say this little uh, has that little plastic key punch thing. He said this is the second one on there. Apparently it it broke while it was still in warranty. Okay, so I guess I will uh, let's give it a test run just to make sure. into the
right, so that was it. Kind of a couple of easy jobs out here. Just the mower just needed a good carb cleaning and regapping the spark plug. Uh, it does need new front wheels or front wheel bushings at least. Um, I'll see if I have something for them in my junk pile. And then the Craftsman Zero Turn, it looks like it was just uh, that little cap, the, the shaft was stuck. So I tightened down that nut on there and everything is uh, uh, operating like it should. It actually runs pretty good. And I'm sure I'll be back. We're going to look at this Kubota back here behind me. And he's got a couple other things. It looks like a couple of uh, different power washers I'm looking at. He wants me to look at those. And it looks like another uh, riding mower back there that I didn't see before. And that's the YT4000, the one I've, I've rebuilt four of those this year. So hopefully I uh, wouldn't get that one running. But, uh, and then there's a couple of power washers back there. Looks like a Ryobi. I think they had a Honda engine on it. And then there's the Troy built with the Briggs and Stratton. So I'm sure I'll be back uh, to fix the rest of his stuff. He looked pretty pleased that, uh, that I fixed these really quick for him. And, you know, <laughs> it goes. I mean, it was really an easy fix if you you know just troubleshoot it right but uh but that's it so i guess thanks for watching once again uh be sure to subscribe and watch for my next video